here at One Stop History, we like to focus on perspectives that are not always talked about in textbooks or history classes. And we're going to be continuing a theme or starting a theme, continuing on a theme that I did with the Civil War videos, which was talking about women and their roles in that war. Today, we're going to be talking about the Revolutionary War, so the war for independence from Britain. Women had many different roles in this conflict. So what were they? I grouped them into three categories. I'm going to be talking about camp followers and then tending to soldiers in the same slide. In addition to that, women were spies. And then some women did dress up as men or disguise themselves as men. So camp followers basically is what it sounds like. So many women followed their husbands during the war. So wherever their husbands went, women followed. For example, George Washington's wife followed him throughout most of the war. Women would stay behind and work on the domestic side of things while their husbands would concentrate on fighting the war. So what does that mean? They helped cook, clean, provide medical help if necessary, uh, clean cannon, so basically put water on them to clean them out, uh, whatever might be needed to help out their husbands so their husbands could focus on the war effort. Now, in the case of husbands being wounded, there are a couple examples of women taking over for their husbands when they got injured. Molly Pitcher is the most well-known example. There's some debate as to whether or not she actually existed. That's still ongoing. But her husband was an artillery uh, man, so he got injured in a battle with uh, the British. It was the Battle of Monmouth. So, naturally, his wife took over and began shooting at the British. So yes, women did end up taking over for their husbands. And regardless of rank, many women or women did similar roles to the men. So that means that wives of common soldiers and wives of generals did basically the same things for the most part. Uh, not as much fighting in the war for generals' wives unless they were by chance killed. I'm not sure if there were any instances of that. The second category of women in the Revolutionary War were spies. These spies worked for both the British and the colonists. Spies for the British uh, were loyalists, loyal to the crown. And these networks spring up in both Philadelphia and New York City. Lydia Dara, uh, there should be a G between the A and the H there, spied on British troops in Philadelphia. She was able to uh, break down their battle plans. Uh, it, she was able to escape Philadelphia. And she found a friendly soldier who was able to pass on that information to George Washington. And then there were uh, spies loyal to the British as well, loyalists. And th these some of these women took advantage of women's reputation of being the weaker sex, so weaker than men. And in one case, this was an advantage that Lorenda Holmes used she would go to the harbor, signal to British ships so she could communicate with them. And she was able to uh, continue signaling to them because of her sex it protected her. So people didn't speak up as much as she was signaling to them. She ended up having to actually swim out to these ships and uh, pass on the information to the British because when they tried to dock the ship could or the boat 
that was coming in could not uh, get there all the way. So she is one of the loyalists that took advantage of women's reputation of being weaker than men to be able to successfully spy for the British. There were other tactics for both sides as well, but that just gives you a brief overview of spy, women spies in the war. Lastly, women did dress as men to fight in the war, as was the case in the Civil War. 80 years later. A lot of women just wanted to fight alongside the men, and more recent historians suggest that maybe some identified as men. Um, that's still up for debate as well. The most famous example is Deborah Simpson, who fought as Robert Shirtliff. That was the name of her deceased brother. She was wounded twice and escaped the hospital because she didn't want to be found out when she was being treated for those two wounds. And she removed one of the bullets. Another one was lodged too deep in her leg and was never removed. So that time she was able to escape to preserve and hide her identity as a woman. However, a year or two later, she was treated for a fever and was found out by a physician that treated her. However, that physician helped her preserve her identity and eventually, at, after the Treaty of Paris, she did receive an honorable discharge. That is a brief overview of women's roles in the Revolutionary War. As always, I hope you liked it. Feel free to subscribe. Like the video, it massively helps me out if you do one or both of those. As always, feel free to comment what topics in history you would like me to make a video about.